That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Surge, the directorial debut of Anil Caria, uh, which premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival, where it picked up a special jury award for its star, Ben Wishaw. Uh, it also uh, went directly to the Berlin Film Festival that year. Uh, it is being released on VOD uh, October 25th, 2021, courtesy of Filmrise. We're a little late on this one. We watched it before the 25th. We did. I'm very busy. Uh, <laughs> the basic story is Ben Wishaw plays a character named Joseph. Mm -hmm. He works security at an airport somewhere in the UK. London. Oh, it's London. It's, but it's not Heathrow. No, it's uh, Sten Stenson. There's, there's six airports in... There are six airports in London? I believe wow. so. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, they're in London and it's not Heathrow. I think it's, I'm forgetting if it's Stenson or Stenson. But anyway, he's like a TSA worker and we, we're too, it's such a basic story, but I'm having a hard time. He works like TSA. He has an exchange with a passenger passing through security. That's kind of weird. The passenger's being a little inappropriate and sort of like, has a, like an exchange with him where he says like I see you I know what you need sort of like maybe he's trying to get him to like join a cult or something and Joseph sort of snaps he has an outburst at work mm -hmm. where he has to be like removed from the floor mm -hmm. he leaves he goes to visit a co-worker named Lily um, and she mentions earlier in the film that she's having trouble with like her setting up her television. So he goes to her house because he he has, he's not at work. So he goes to her house and she requires some sort of cable. So he goes to buy it, but his card declines. And this fool decides to rob a bank. Well, after that, his, the ATM eats his card when he tries to get cash. And it, you know. Sure. So he robs a bank, mm -hmm. robs another bank, robs a third bank, gets caught. The end. In a nutshell, yes. That's it. Go. And and meanwhile, kind of slips into this kind of uncomfortable psychotic state. I mean, if okay. Uh, that scene, the scene that you mentioned, is kind of the impetus for him snapping, if you will, is interesting because that that passenger there. It, there's an earlier scene that's very uncomfortable with the pa with the passenger that has to disrobe because he's still setting off the security. That's right. Um, but this. The, the one where the change happens almost seems... Well, it, it's clear that he's mentally ill or mentally impaired. There's something wrong with him. Sure. But uh, I think the what maybe moves Joseph is that uh, commentary about being seen. And it's, it's almost kind of... It reminded me of that sequence in... Especially in the original Cat People where Simone, Simon, uh, somebody, a country woman of hers sees her and it's a very creepy scene like, I see you, sister. <laughs> So, early on, we see Joseph playing with his teeth, mm -hmm. which is uncomfortable. He likes to chew on glass. Because he's like chewing on glass, so it's just automatic tension. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so, what it's got going for it is, it is a really good uh, lead performance from Ben Wishaw, in such a degree that it almost overwhelms, in the sense that it distracts from how kind of not nonsensical the story is i agree i think his performance is better than the writing yes it's joseph's birthday when we meet him and he's in the break room after the exchange you mentioned with like a passenger who doesn't speak english and takes off all his clothes which was a tense scene so um joseph's in the break room playing with his teeth and some glass when everyone's enjoying birthday cake and they're all just socializing and at the end of the scene the lady Lillian Lily, Lily. she goes oh whose birthday is it anyway because they're eating cake and Joseph doesn't speak up so again I think it's made very clear that uh, he seems invisible mm -hmm. then we meet his parents mm -hmm. and I thought the function of his parents was to show us that he had like a troubled childhood but I didn't think his parents were that awful. They just seemed like like annoying ass parents. Yeah, and a bit nondescript and working class and 
oblivious to their son and his emotional needs that he's you know it's clear that he's kind of a disappointment and I think their first sequence really does just that I think when we see them again after he's robbed some banks and he's on the news there is I think uh, Ellie Haddington as his mother has some nice moments some nice emotional moments with him sure going down my list Patrice O'Neill, I know we just talked about this, but um, it's uh, something different. Patrice O'Neill has a bit about TSA workers mm -hmm. and how, like, I think he's talking about, like, uh, he, he was at some airport and, like, there was a really overweight woman working TSA. And he's like, you're going to protect me? Like, you can't even run after the person. So I thought it was funny that Lily, she can't figure out how to, like, screen mirror onto her yeah, she needs an HDMI cord, but then that sets but, up... But then she's at the airport protecting all of our security and she can't even figure out how to... <laughs> sure, but it, much in the same way that it's ridiculous that he's really mo motivated initially to rob the bank to pay for a $5 HDMI cable uh, to, to impress her, like his level of frustration. And then everything just kind of slips down further from there. And there, it, it really just is a stack of uncomfortable sequences. Like he checks into a fancy hotel, proceeds destroys to- destroys the room. Destroys it. But even when he's checking in, he's like gnawing on the fruit in the fruit bowl and um, it crashes a wedding reception that it does. There are moments where you, you laugh because you're so uncomfortable. But again, it seems for what? Because the very final shot of the film, which is kind of reminiscent of something in Asghar for Hadi's a hero from this year, the, He's, getting, he's locked up uh, in this glass compartment at this bank that he fails. And the, the way he's able to rob these banks is he pretends he has a gun. He's, he has, like, puts his finger in his pocket and says, I have a gun, give me your money. He's a very polite bank robber. He's a very polite bank robber. Yes. <laughs> like, the, one, one of those, he's like, that's all I need. I just, that's fine. Just yeah, a couple yeah. rumbles. We also see uh, Joseph at, at the end, like, steal a moped or, like, a scooter, and then he crashes the scooter mm -hmm. so he's pretty badly injured before he then proceeds to rob the and third there's a bank. fight scene yeah there's a fight there's a lot going on and again i think ben Wishaw gives a nice performance it just feels uh very cliched like this like like this weird guy walking around making weird faces chewing on glass like he's a loner and he's like doing these illegal things, but in a way that doesn't seem like he's a bad person. So I guess we're supposed to feel for him like this is a person on the verge of a nervous breakdown and yeah. society didn't see him and this is what led to it. Sure. Yeah, and, no, and it seems very basic to me. It is very basic, although, you know, with the cinematography from Stuart Bentley, they are trying to, they're trying to make the look of the film kind of feel symbiotic with Rashad's performance, I think, which it does do a decent job of. It's very whirling and jagged and uh, disorienting, I think, watching it a bit. But of course, inevitably, you're going to be reminded of other films, like uh, the, the juggernaut of these types of films, which is um, Joel Schumacher's Falling Down, starring Michael Douglas from 1993, which again, has a lot, which might be his best film, uh, a lot going, it has something to say. Like, well, and what's missing here is this kid, Joseph is not he doesn't seem to occupy a world where people are unkind to him versus like falling down. This person was like pushed to the edge because of everyone just being garbage. But in this film, it's like he, his work life seems to be okay. He ends up having sex with Lily. After he goes and gets his little HDMI cord, he brings it back and they have sex. So clearly she does, she's not repulsed by him or she would have been friendly with him. What is uncomfortable about that scene is she's also sick, like legit sick called in from work. Sure. But I think... I, I, I didn't have a lot of uh, sympathy for this character, except that he clearly has mental health issues. Right. You know, it, it reminded me, and I don't know if this was a, a reference point for the writers or the filmmaker, it reminded me of a, a British New Wave classic called Billy Liar from 1963, which was an early John Schlesinger film starring Tom Courtney and a, kind of a budding Julie Christie. And Tom Courtney is a man who lives with his parents who act much like these parents do, who are just kind of irritated with his son. And I think he's like a clerk in a bank or something and he lives in his own fantasy world as you know generally just a fuck up uh, but has this through this kind of budding romance with the Julie Christie character blossoms a little bit uh, but this, this felt very much like that film for a contemporary audience and but without any of the finesse going on in the Schlesinger film what would you give it 
Uh, I think two and a half is fair. I think if you like Benoit Shaw, of course, this is worth seeing. Uh, if you're expecting something new, don't. I would give it two and a half as well. Anything else? No. Bye. Thank you.